we we got to start training Texans rather than just importing nurses from abroad. We're importing welders from abroad because they're too cheap to train Texans to do that job. That's not what, that's not right, is it? No. And we need a governor who understands that. You know, we don't need somebody lying about the dropout rate in this state or what we're doing in education. Just last week, on July the 13th, Rick Perry did two things. First of all, he cut state funding for after school tutoring in summer school that would help some of the kids get up to what we call grade level, catch up to where they're even with the other schools. Janet's called the extended hours program, the TEA cut. You know, the last thing you ought to cut is the education because that's the productivity. That's like, you know, uh, there's no way that that's eating the seed corn. You're not going to be able to harvest unless you plant. These kids get drop out of school. Just look at what that's. That's, that's not conservative. That's uh, what do you call it? Penny short, pound foolish. I mean, penny wise, pound foolish. That's just uh, that's wrong. So uh, they, he cut that. No press release. But he did have a press release about his new dropout initiative. You know what it was? You're under 18. He says. Then, if you apply for a driver's license, you'll have to, you know, uh, show that you're enrolled in school, public or private or homeschool, or in a GED course. You're going to have to provide for it to get a driver's license. Well, it's a good idea. I mean, I'm sure his political consultants came up with it. They polled it. They say, why don't you do this? It's popular. The problem with the idea is it's been a law since 1989. <laughs> He'd been responsible for enforcing law since, since, since for the last nine and a half years. Either he didn't care or he didn't know. And, and what Andrew and I, and, uh, what we did in our community, we went into the, the living rooms and we mobilized thousands of citizens to bring these young people back to school. That's what we need. We want a governor who cares and who knows. And I will commit to you that I'll be that governor who cares and knows so the next generation has even more opportunities than we do. Isn't that a, what we need in the governor's mansion? Mm -hmm. Third, I commit to you that we'll conduct the business with integrity. That means state offices will not simply be used as part of a political machine. It means that we will conduct ourselves the way that we would expect other state employees. Is there anybody here who's been a state employer associated with TDC by any chance? Anybody? Raise their hand. Okay. Now, when Joe Ned was talking about the governor of this state living in this $2 million mansion costing $10,000 a month, when a few years back I was just at a meeting with and the last stop with TDC employees, I'd ask, let me ask the TDC employees this. Has this governor in nine and a half years ever met with the rank and file employees of the Texas correction system to listen to what they thought were necessary to have, be, have a safe work environment, and, or for that matter, to use taxpayer dollars more efficiently? Has he ever had a meeting with you like that? No. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. As chief executive, I'll do what I did with meeting with the fire and the police and the other civilian employees of the city and meet with employees because I'll tell you what, I find that a lot of them have some of the best suggestions about how you can run the place more efficiently. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I did that at the last meeting that we were in and the last town that we were in in Huntsville and two of the TDC employees, and if anybody's brave enough to, to stand up here to make it interesting, not just hear me talk, they said, that in 2003, the state at about $750,000 began living, uh, leasing something in what's called Buffalo. It's where the big wigs go. Anybody know about that? Buffalo Ranch. Buffalo Ranch. What is the Buffalo Ranch, sir? Does anybody know where Buffalo Ranch is? Well, there's press here, so this is going to be part of your job. They say, i got to check this out. But this is what you get from employees if you ask them, that they maintain a facility so that the big wigs 
could go play golf and they could have their retreats and the meetings. You see what I'm saying? We want a governor who conducts himself with integrity, who runs it efficiently, so that the organization is run for the taxpayers, not for the people at the top. That's what we need. That's what we need. And we will have my integrity. We will have my word on that. Thank you for being here. Help me spread the word. I don't know whether we can get 80% in this county, but spread the word to your friends. They don't need to be the same party as I am. They can be any Texan. I don't know any Texan who wants us to not prepare Texans for the future. He wants us to waste taxpayer money. Tell them the story in Houston. There's plenty of people here that can tell the story. And I'll tell you what, it'll be pretty nice. In November, you'll be part of history. When you turn on Fox News and you hear their new commentator, Sarah Palin, <laughs> get, the, get the little seat out and they say, oh my gosh. <laughs> that governor, that governor, uh, well, I won't say it, never mind. <laughs> governor, you know that governor who says he runs around in a jogging suit, never mind. Uh, I, won't, I won't tell the coyote joke. But you'll read that, it's been beat, beaten by a successful business person who's known nonsense as Democrat from Houston, Harris County, Bill White, and Texas has a new governor. You'll be part of that. Thank you very much.